I'm not even clear how long you've been coming in to see me. It's been, what, six months? Uh, probably around there, yeah. And what got that started? You know, what had the, what set the occasion for you to come in? So... When you're in a medical environment, the way you get extra training is do a, to do a fellowship somewhere. I looked for an adolescent medicine fellowship and I couldn't find one. But there was a job open in a place called Boys Town, which I knew about. If the future of our country is to be secure from dangerous enemies from within. So, I mean, you can see this campus, you know, there's the church, there's the field house, there's the grounds. It's residential care, but the term residential care doesn't bring to mind this kind of environment, right. not in this country. The kind of thing that's brought to mind by residential care is an austere, cold-looking, modernistic building, small windows, empty hallways, shift-level staff that carry a pound and a half of keys on their belt that don't Multiple interact. Multiple bunk beds in one room, they get, kids, yes. sardines in there. They, they walk single file, everything's regimented. And there's institutional abuse, you know, there's a risk of being going over. Like, there are probably multiple incidents on a daily basis where there's some sort of, like, aggressive encounter between staff and youth. Mm -hmm. and, and here, on this campus, you know, you raise your voice to a kid, that's the last day you're going to be on this campus. We're not going to have any, any kind of abuse on this campus. And when people think about residential care, what they've heard about residential care, and it's actually accurate with most programs, but this is obviously a different kind of a program. It's very unfortunate that the category called residential care is one that we're kind of sucked up into. We yeah. should probably have a category all our own. Today we want you to meet Father Flanagan himself. Good morning. Good morning. Finally. Finally. Finally I get to give this talk. It was scheduled for October 22nd at 9 in the morning, and I was uh, very determined to give it. I was hell-bent to give it. I did everything I could to get here. I got a little sick before. I was sick all night the night before. Nonetheless, I was very determined to get here, and I made it as far as the vestibule. I didn't get any further. Next thing I know, I'm in an ambulance and on my way to the hospital. The question is, why so determined? I mean, I give talks all the time. I give them here, I give them all over the country, I give them all over the world. Why was I so determined to give this talk? And the reason is, I've become uh, convinced uh, that the culture at large doesn't really care about the work that we do. You look in the mirror and you're like, who the f is this guy? Like, what am I doing here? And why did this happen to me? Um, like learning how to navigate those emotions that like you wake up and it's like, what are you gonna do? Where are you gonna go? And like fighting through that, like it's a skill and a challenge that I think everyone goes through at least once in their life. And maybe it shouldn't have been so early for me, but. It says in the Bible, there are angels among us, but it doesn't say what they look like. It just says what they do. I mean, obviously your mother's death when you were nine years old, really changed who your family was, it changed who you were. Um, do you think if she was still here that she would be proud of you, Neil? I know she would. Mm -hmm. You're a population of people that have decided to take care of people. I don't know why you decided to do that, I just know that you did. You're part of an organization whose mission isn't, it isn't about you. It's about them. 